relationship. You know, you don't want to spend the time, you know, just doing what you were supposed to do. You have to do this because you want to do it. You have to feel like you don't have a problem sweeping the floor. That's what the Holy Prophet did. He mended his own clothes. How do you get to be, a, you know, a taskmaster if we're following the Holy Prophet's practice? You read these hadiths about the Holy Prophet. That's what he was. He was about helping his wife. He was about looking out for her and not, you know, just demanding that she covers her position as, uh, you know, a woman of the house. You have to remember this, brothers, because you're just marrying somebody through the rich denial of you system. If that's the case, if you're not, you know, you're doing some arranged things through your parents and things like that. So you have to be considerate of that only because that's the way you'll make a home really a paradise. I couldn't wait to get home from the job when I was raising kids. It might have been a little hectic, you know, the kids running around and carrying on, and, you know, she's busy all day long, you know, with the kids and all these kind of things, and I come in, and it still was, I couldn't wait to get home because of the atmosphere that was made in the house by my wife. And if she don't have any kind of problems, you know, uh, with you, she's going to make sure that house is your castle, believe me. And that's how I lived for 44 years. You know, and now, you know, when you're getting old and cranky and all of that kind of thing, <laughs> you got all that idiosyncrasies going, she's going to have a little more patience with you, and you're going to have a little more patience with her. So it all works out. You know, it's still something you got to work at. But believe me, brothers. You know, your ego should not get in the way of you having a happy home. <coughs> Remember that. I just got this mental image of you coming home from work and Raheem in third grade, but like six feet tall. <laughs> 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 Each of the recipients. Please, please. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I don't speak Urdu. And the word. <laughs> I have to admit. And uh, I did have a book when I went to Rabwa. And uh, I did, after a while, after using the book, uh, talk with. Azur, and uh, so the thing was that I learned a commercial from the radio, and it was, <laughs> it says, uh, come see you now, lift the noon day, and I said that everybody was thinking I'd speak everything. <laughs> if everybody can understand that broken earth. <laughs> And then when I go out and, and I see someone, I say, Apka <laughs> nam. <laughs> and they'd answer, you know, and then I say, uh, you know, my name. Uh, you know, uh, my name uh, is, uh, I, I, I forgot now, but uh, I would say uh, that my name is Hussein Abdul Aziz. You know, and, uh, so things like that. So it was just a lot of, uh, just a lot of words that I picked up <laughs> as I went along. <laughs> To try to you know show that I love the people there and that I, I wanted to be there. Well, mashallah, it won you a, a private conversation with uh, Khalifa Tobi, so yeah. <laughs> it worked out. <laughs> yes, um, this is the Mufti Muhammad Sadiq Lifetime Commitment Award presented to Hussein Abdulaziz for embodying Hazrat Mufti Muhammad Sadiq. Razilanhu, pioneering spirit of spreading Islam, Ahmadiyya, in the United States of America.
This was presented by Rizwan Aladin, Sadr Matin Skudam Lamedia, USA. And the second award to Jalaluddin Abdul Latif Sadr. Jazakallah for uh, gracing us with your presence today, and um, Jazakallah for giving the time to present yet another one of these. Inshallah, we will have another one at National Ijma. Look forward to something. <laughs> Uh, my brothers. First of all, a quick note of Neba uh, Mirsab. I, I um, if you if you don't mind joining us in the front, I'd appreciate it. You, you told me you're leaving yesterday today, and you're here today. So uh, <laughs> okay, exactly. <clears throat> when it comes to the Mufti Sadiq Awards, I was thinking about this. You saw that in the um, in what Mutmim Sab showed us just now that it. Uh, We've given them out at Istama and we give out a QRC. And actually, the first awardees were a QRC. And the question is why? You know, I mean, you would think that, gee, this would be a great thing to uh, only show and express that when all the Qadam can be there, you know. Um, but first of all, we also want to, you know, get as many through uh, as possible. But more importantly, I think there's a, there's a huge message for you as leaders when it comes to hearing their stories. Because again, unfortunately, though we'd love to have them be at our homes and, and come and do uh, visits to our local areas, we, we just can't. And it's all about telling the stories that they have. Uh, Motam Sahib, you couldn't say it better when you were saying about the future, because it isn't about the past, it's about the future. And in these cases, with these marvelous brothers of ours, it is about the future that they've given us. What they have experienced applies so much to what we are doing today. And they've given us their future, as you can see, uh, physically as well. And uh, I am most great. I want to express my utmost gratitude to you both for for that. One other part, I have to be a little bit honest with you about. Jalal um, Sab, you know, when I was growing up in New York, uh, I, I was a pretty young child at that point, but I still have very vivid memories of his purple African shirt that he would wear and his. Uh, African style Toby that he would wear at the Union Street Mosque in, in Brooklyn. Uh, and I remember walking in there and afterwards he'd be serving the food in the basement and we'd come down and, and always with a cheery smile. So those memories go way back. And, um, and But I have to admit a great amount of guilt that though I have seen Hussein Abdul Aziz Saab many, many times at so many different just and so on, I've never met him, and that to me is a great sorrow that now at this age of my life that I've never had the chance to really talk to him, and inshallah I hope I can uh, remediate or be able to make up for that lost time. But it just goes to show that they have been here, they have been coming to Jalsas. I don't remember them having any yellow caution tape saying don't talk to me. Um, what opportunities are we missing? And we still have these gems, these jewels, that we see at our Jalsa Salana and other functions. And how can we make use of that time with them and learn from them and protect our future? So I hope, inshallah, that after this is over, the session's over, that that spirit doesn't die. And that is the, the true spirit of Hazrat Mukti Mullah Sadiq and his mission here. One last thing I wanted to mention was when uh, you, uh, uh, Jalati Sahib, you talk about um, Muhammad Sadiq Sahib, he's a person that is very dear to me as well and very much in my memories. And um, I was talking earlier about Athfal and how you have to look out for the Athfal and keep an eye on it. If you want to talk about a true Murabi Athfal, it was late Muhammad Sadiq Sahib. When I used to come into Union Street Masjid, I was, we were very attached to our father's leg. It would be my Irfan by on one leg and me on the other leg of my father. 
and we would not stray away from him. We just, you know, we're a couple of Long Island boys from the suburbs. You know, the city wasn't too good for us in those days. We weren't rough enough for that. And so when we would get in there, we were just not, we were not very social. And it was Muhammad Sadiq Saab, I remember this, every time he would say, are you Sister Kulat's son? My mother, he, he knew my mother when she was a little girl. Are you Sister Kulat's son? And I'd be like, wow, how do you know who I am? How do you remember who I am? And that's how that started. If there was any other person that I could go to besides my father or my grandfather, the masjid, it was Muhammad Sadiq Saab. And that stuck on until the day he passed away. And so, if you, for all of us who want to look for what it is, what that spirit that we need to have when we lead our majalis, is that type of big brother, that type of fatherly love that they've given to us. Um, <clears throat> if it's appropriate, if we could do a, a, a dua, um, and then I believe Amir Sahib is at hand, so I need to go out to uh, receive him. <clears throat> so the Sahib UK, could you, would you mind leading us in dua, please? Uh -huh.